Hey, Joe, thinking back, what do you think was the, the boldest move you had to make secondary-wise, moving people around to get ready for that Oklahoma game? Huh. There's, a lot of, there's a lot of contenders there. I don't know. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it's just taking the leap that, that guys that haven't played – um, are gonna gonna step up when they're asked, and uh, that's gonna happen. That's inevitable every year. You're gonna have some of that. I, I hope you, you know. You hope you're kind of prepared for that through in, in the off season, and it doesn't happen during the season, but it did, and it, and it will or probably will again some point this year. So, um, you know, you, you just got to believe in your guys, and 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 we did. Uh, Echo and Ross were two guys who shined when we haven't seen a bunch of them in the past. What did you like most about those two players? Um, I just thought that their confidence grew as the game went on. I, I, I believe that in the beginning of the game, they were, they were pretty timid about whether or not they belong. And, you know, I, I, something inside of them, of course, as competitors, uh, they, they felt that way to a degree. But I, I think until you really get out on the grass and prove it, there's always that shadow of doubt in your mind. And I think as it went on, particularly toward the end of the game, those guys were playing much faster. And, uh, and you could see it in their attitude and, and how they carried themselves on the sideline, how they carried themselves on the field on tape. Um, you know, I, I was just impressed with how they grew as those 60 minutes uh, ticked down. Adam? Joe, how did your approach against, uh, against the young quarterback, Rattler, kind of changed as, that, as that game wore on the other day? Well, well, we had a plan, um, and the plan was we were going to show them uh, certain pictures, and um, we knew that we might have to take our lumps with some of those pictures, and we did, um, and then we were going to change the pictures, and that's, uh, that's what we did. We stuck to it. It, it was hard at times, um, but, you know, I think, you know, as a young guy, I, I felt like I wasn't sure how he was going to react to getting hit. Uh, and we've got some guys up front that can really get after it, and they did toward the end of the game. And, you know, I thought if we gave him pictures that he was familiar with, I thought he'd probably be pretty successful. And if we were able to change those pictures a little bit, then he was going to hold on to that ball, and that's where those hits would come, and that's what happened. Thanks. John? You just touched on it there a little bit, Joe, but how much of a game changer was the pass rush in the second half and being able to just rush four and get to him like that? Outstanding. Uh, something we probably didn't have the ability to do last year uh, as much. I think the emergence of Khalid Duke uh, was, was has been big. Of course, Wyatt is always steady, and uh, Bronson Massey I thought played played huge. Um, I mean, I could name a number of guys that were you know we we tried to rotate. And, you know, I'm screaming on the headset. I just wanted to continue to get fresh rushers in there. You know, just continue to keep throwing bodies at them. And um, yeah, when you can do things with four, you can do a lot more things in the back end to be sure. And how much of a difference did it make having Jerron actually back there and healthy for the entirety of a game against oh, Oklahoma? Man. Well, you know, we were talking earlier. Uh, Jerron, you know, played a lot of ball here, but he, he was, he's been out of position. I mean, he was out of position last year. We all knew it, but we were just trying to get our 11 best guys out on the field, and that's how it fell. Um, you know, I think we, we got him in a position now where he can be his best, and we just got to do a job of getting him around the action. But his leadership and his steadiness – his communication skills uh, really calms people down back there. Appreciate it, Joe. Fitz. Uh, Coach, you used A.J. Parker at, at the nickel a little bit at Oklahoma. Uh, how did he do, first of all, and what does that free you up with being able to get those longer corners uh, out there against some of these Big Ten or Big 12 taller receivers? Yeah, and that's part of the plan. He did a really good job in there. Um, AJ's got tremendous feet, tremendous, uh, as we know, he's got tremendous man ability. He's not a big guy. Uh, a lot of times you get some of those smaller matchups in the slot. Um, and, you know, it, it goes deeper than man. AJ's got tremendous feel for the game. I mean, AJ is a really natural football player, very intelligent. And he just was really a natural fit in there at nickel. Uh, not only the man stuff, but in the zone stuff, too. Just doing a great job in the curl windows and doing a good job of reacting to things back down to the flat. I mean, he, he's, he's um, you know, we tried it a little bit there during that off week, and it was, a, it was an experiment that we decided to roll with. And, and I, you know, I think you're going to see more of him in there. And also, um, <clears throat> Khalid Duke, uh, when at, at what point this fall did you know this guy was pretty good last year, but this is a different football player that showed up this fall, this summer? Entirely different football player. Yeah, I would have I never saw this coming. 
Uh, I would have never saw this coming um, in the wintertime. I mean, you know, when we headed in for quarantine, I guess. I know, you know, when we got back, uh, and, and I know that we did a lot of Zoom things and stuff over the quarantine, and Coach Wyatt, and, and he met on several occasions over Zoom, dozens of occasions probably, and, um, you know, we knew the Khalid was taking things very seriously, you know, and, and when, you, when I saw him coming back from quarantine, his body had changed. I mean, he, there was a guy that did not waste his time uh, over the winter. And, you know, we were excited to see what he could do. And I would say to answer your question bluntly, I'd say after practice one, we probably knew that we had a different <laughs> kind of guy there and, and uh, it showed up. Uh, that speed package you use, you know, quite a bit there in the fourth quarter. Uh, is that something that against a team like Tech that really has a tendency to drop back and pass two thirds of the time that we might see more of on Saturday? Potentially, you know, one of the things that makes it that makes it difficult with a team like Texas Tech is they go so fast, they make it hard to get your substitutions in. Right. And that's part of the design. You know, they, they, they go quickly. They go quickly on third down so that if you got big guys out there, you got to play third down with big guys. Or if you get little guys out there on third down, you got to play first down potentially with little guys. And so it makes it a little bit more challenging uh, to do that, to be sure. But uh, you might see it a little bit. All right, let's do these last two, Kellis and Ryan. Go ahead, Kellis. You mentioned uh, Duke taking things to the next level. What's something that Wyatt can do uh, to take his game to the next level throughout the rest of the season? You know, we've just got to continue to get Wyatt in positions to be successful. I, I think he's going to win his one-on-one -on -one matchups by and large. The, the, the issue that we were having with him a little bit toward the end of the game is they were chipping him with tight ends. They were chipping him with backs. Uh, they weren't allowing him to rush. Um, and have just the clean one-on-ones. And so we've got to do a job of moving him around as coaches and getting him positions where he can get those one-on-ones. He's proven, uh, you know, a year ago uh, that he can rush inside if need be. You know, he can, you know, he can rush from any of the four spots. And we, we just got to get him in spots where he can get those singles and, and go win. All right, Ryan, finish us off. Hey, Joe, uh, after Saturday's win, you know, Coach Kleiman mentioned that uh, – you know, with the secondary, you guys basically had three days to, to get those guys shuffled all around and playing different spots. Just how how nerve-wracking was that at practice last week, not only having to move that many guys around, but then also knowing that, hey, you're going up against a pretty high-powered offense, too, at the same time? Well, I don't know if I have a word to describe that. Um, <laughs> but listen, you know, that that's why you've got to teach concepts, and that's what we try to do is, is um, you know, the guys in my room, they, they're they're – they're hearing as much about nickel play as they are about safety play as they are about free safety play. And so, you know, I do, I am a big believer in game reps or pictures, you know, even if it's practice reps, I mean, I think you've got to see it to be able to do it. But if you have somewhat of a background knowledge through what you're doing with meetings and whatnot, you should be able to move those parts in and out pretty easily. Um, it's going to be painful, but it's, uh, you know, it shouldn't be impossible. And then kind of as a follow up on that same topic, how does maybe the success that you guys had last week maybe make you feel differently about changing things up compared to the lineup that you had in the opener in the secondary? Well, uh, I mean, there's people moving in and out, right? So it's, uh, you know, the, the people that, that weren't part of the lineup uh, when they do get back, I, I hope that they're able to be part of the lineup again. I mean, they, they were starters for a reason or they were high on the depth chart for a reason. And so, um, you know, we're going to continue to play the best people but, um, you know, they have to earn it, and nothing's, nothing's given. And I think that competition is something that maybe we didn't have uh, heading into last week. And, and I think that this maybe opened our eyes to, to some, giving some other people some opportunities. And when they took and run the, ran with those opportunities, um, it's going to make things a lot more interesting moving forward.